Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, November 30. Jamaica and Argentina have signed a sport cooperation agreement. It was signed on Thursday by the two countries' foreign affairs ministers. Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith and Prime Minister Andrew Holness are currently in Argentina for the G20 summit. Mr. Holness, who is chairman of the Caribbean community, will address the summit Saturday on issues related to climate change. The Prime Minister will then head to Trinidad and Tobago for a meeting on the CARICOM single market and economy. He returns to Jamaica on December 5. The Electoral Commission of Jamaica, ECJ, has commenced a dead elector removal exercise. It seeks to clear the national voters list of persons who have died since 1998. Generally, the ECJ removes the names of deceased electors from the voters list based on information provided by political parties, the Electoral Office of Jamaica, returning officers and constituency staff. The Commission also receives a quarterly list from the Registrar General's Department, RGD. Our objective on, in, on, under this exercise is to re identify and confirm or remove at least in excess of 260,000 in the electors based on our estimation who have died over the years. The Director of Elections was speaking at Wednesday's JIS Think Tank. Verifiers from the Electoral Office of Jamaica will visit almost 300,000 homes of electors 40 years and older to confirm their status on the voters list. Meanwhile, the ECJ will engage public and private stakeholders, including the Ministry of Health, to share their death records with the EOJ. Government will be reviewing the building fees charged by municipal authorities. This is to create a standardized system to ensure fees for development projects are in keeping with current realities. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie made the announcement to a gathering of mayors and municipal cooperation officers on Tuesday. Developers have raised concerns regarding dissimilar fees charged by various local authorities. In nine out of ten cases, the fees that we charge are considered outdated. So one of the handicaps surrounding the performance of the MCs is lack of adequate funding. It is important, therefore, that we all understand and appreciate that the fees that we charge are critical to our survival. He says parishes with high potential for infrastructural investment will not be classified to charge the same amount for building fees as those parishes with lower prospects. A series of discussions will continue between Minister McKenzie and the local authorities to develop a feasible fee restructure. Government has allocated $15 million to help expand the Montego Bay High School for Girls in St. James. Education Minister Senator Royal Reed made the announcement at the institution's recent annual prize-giving and dedication ceremony for a new classroom block. The allocation will be used to purchase land to facilitate the school's expansion in 2019. You wanted money for land and I said yes, you're going to get your $15 million, you got your $15 million. Several students were awarded for outstanding academic and extracurricular performances during the 2017-2018 academic year. Minister Reed commended them for their outstanding performance despite the infrastructural conditions and constraints. Government will be strengthening the parenting arm of the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, by bringing on board the National Parenting Support Commission. The news was revealed by the State Minister for Youth, Floyd Green, recently. So we want to form what we will call a super child protection agency that not only looks at intervening when a child has been abused, but proactively looks at parenting sessions, parenting mentors, working with our parents to reduce the amount of abuse. Minister Green was speaking at the CPFSA's 12th Annual Candlelight Vigil and Concert held in Emancipation Park. It was staged under the theme, Every Child Deserves Protection, in commemoration of World Day for the Prevention of Child Abuse. 
And finally, the Agriculture Ministry has assured the public that there is no E. coli contaminant reported on lettuce produced locally in Jamaica. Earlier this week, the Ministry's Plant Quarantine Produce Inspection Division placed a temporary suspension on the importation of romaine lettuce to Jamaica. This was due to an E. coli outbreak in the U.S. linked to lettuce produced in several American states. In a subsequent news release, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority is stressing that there are no reports of local E. coli contamination. It seeks to quell the fears of supermarket and hotel operators who have been fearful of buying the produce from local growers. The Agriculture Ministry is also stressing that there is sufficient supply of lettuce to meet the demands of the market and the upcoming festive season. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.